Hello, my name's Thurza and today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get to grips with oil pastels. So with any new medium, it's good to have a practice. So start by dividing a piece of paper up into eight and then um, we're going to start by just doing light overlapping te textures. Uh, just take any colours you like and lightly scribble them into your first section. Um, next, you can do the same thing, but press a lot harder um, and try blending them in together. So letting a green go over a blue and a yellow go over a green and see what happens. But basically the difference is with this one, you can't see any white of the paper showing through. The only white you're seeing is the white from the oil pastel. So the next technique we're going to try is scraffito. So put some lighter colours down first and then cover them with a good layer of black or any darker colours like brown and blue. Then take a cocktail stick and you can just start scratching away to reveal the lighter colours underneath. This is quite a nice way of doing grasses on a landscape or um, something like something in textured, in, in textured on a landscape. Um, now, oil pastels can also be turned into paint just by using uh, turpentine or any mineral oil like a baby oil will work. I really love this uh, technique. Next, I'm just trying mark making. So if you just take the pastels and try different overlapping marks, squiggles, swirls, just get a feel of the kind of marks you can make with them. Now we're doing something that I call reverse graffito. So on a separate piece of paper, just lay down some colours quite thickly um, and then turn it over. And with a cocktail stick, you can draw on the back and it and uh, hopefully will transfer the image onto your page underneath. So this can be quite a nice technique, especially it could be used with uh, as a resist, um, which is actually what I'm going to do now. So if you take a white or actually any colour, it because it's an oil pastel, resist with any watercolour paint. So I've done sort of a bit of a cloud for a sky um, and now I'm going over with my watercolours. Um, but this is, this is quite a good technique for doing backgrounds. And then finally, sometimes just a bit of a white page can put people off. So um, you can obviously do mixed media with them. So I'm just doing a bit of a watercolour background and then working into with more sort of mark making techniques. Um, I was actually looking at um, things growing on a beach um, for, for this, but yeah, it's just another way of getting over the white page. So that's it for the techniques really. Um, have a go at them um, and, and it'll help you feel more confident before we now go on to our next project. So I'm looking at a landscape as a good thing to practice. I've taken this image off the internet um, and just start by very loosely drawing in the lines of your landscape. I like landscapes because they can be sort of abstract and um, nobody really knows apart from you what it what it looked like anyway so they're quite good things to practice on. So I start just by in this case putting down the background which is some mountains um, just lying the colours down as flatly as possible um, moving on to the mountains that come are coming a bit more into the foreground um, again I'm using now the technique of of uh, using turpentine to, to spread the colour I like this because it means you're not looking at a blank piece of paper and, and, and it Psychologically, I think it helps when you're working on something to lay a lot of colour down quickly. Um, I'm now moving on to the sky and I'm lying down some colours with oil pastels. In, in my um, picture that I'm looking at, there's a bit of a sunset going on behind the mountains in the background. Um, I'm also putting a bit of resist in there with some watercolours. But I just carry on working into it. One of the things I really loved about using this medium was that you can just keep working more and more colours on top of each other. Um, I'm now doing the valley floor, which is kind of picking up the light from the sunset. So it was a lot lighter, even though the foreground and the background is a lot darker. Um, again, now working into the mountain, which is the, 
the very foreground, which I really want to get some texture in. So I'm lying down some base colours here um, and ready to do some graffito. And again, I'm also using the Terps again to, to spread the colours out. Yeah, I really liked that Terps technique. It is really, really good for getting over the blank page. And here I've got my cocktail stick and I'm starting to scratch through. And uh, then I just carry on really. I'm just um, building up the textures, laying down more colour. Um, it's really quite a forgiving way to work. And I say, if you don't like anything, you can just keep scratching away and taking things off and adding other colours in. Um, so I think this is me just about finished now. Deciding when to stop is always quite hard. <laughs> So when you have finished, obviously you can remove your tape. And if it's something you really like, why not put it in a frame? Thank you.